Caddis Maximus here. This is just going to be a quick video about die grinder grinding wheels. I've done some work with uh, die grinders, that's for sure, and most of the work I did was well before I knew anything about die grinder wheels. I still don't know a ton about them, but the primary purpose of this video is to show all the different shapes of die grinding wheels. People who work on engines and do porting or any kind of fabrication work will often use die grinders, which are these long stick type grinders. This is an old Black & Decker. Harbor Freight has them as well as many other manufacturers. And so the purpose of this video is just to show that they do come in various colors and sizes, but particularly it's the different shapes. I've certainly seen and talked to several people who've done cylinder porting, and when I ask maybe, oh, you know, how many different uh, die grinding wheels, and they say, oh, I use a couple or a couple, three different ones, it always kind of makes me have a sad expression because I've done some porting. I mean, it's been a long time. The last time was mating a 2G, 4G, 63 exhaust manifold to a cast stainless steel turbo housing for a 16G turbo. And all I had was one of these kind of straight type wheels. And it was a bit difficult trying to get into the, each of the, you know, the inside edges. And I really wish I would have known about some of these other shapes. And so that's kind of the purpose of this video is when you may need to do some die grinding to be aware that there's actually a huge variety of different wheels. These 10 pink wheels actually came from True Value, and so I will include, they don't have part numbers, but they have UPC codes, and so I'll include the UPC codes for these 10 wheels. The others are just kind of general. And so one of the things is that they'll come in orange. I'm not entirely sure about the differences in grinding material because there are primar they are primarily aluminum oxide, but you can also get uh, silicon carbide and some various other grinding materials. I should say grinding wheel materials and talk about some safety aspects. Every time you put in a new wheel, you want to run the grinder, preferably like in a trash can for like a minute or so, just to make sure that there isn't any problems with the glue and the wheel isn't going to fly off. These die grinders tend to run anywhere from 25,000, which is about the standard, to real high speed ones. Um, and you do need to be careful. Like this Black & Decker here, uh, it clearly says 35,000 RPM. So this is like a giant Dremel. And grinding wheels are glued together. They use what's known as a vitrified bond, and uh, they can explode. And at those RPMs, people don't realize how much force a little grinding wheel will have. But it can certainly cause real injury, and not just hitting you in the eye. So you always want to do that. You want to make sure that the grinding wheels don't get excessively overheated, because that can also cause them to break apart. And the third issue, like this one, is you want to, at some point, get a uh, grinding wheel dressing stone. Because when grinding wheels start to get build up, built up with a bunch of metal, particularly if you're grinding like aluminums or coppers, what ends up happening is all that metal hot covers up the grinding wheel. And it just turns into friction, which is heat, rather than actual material removal. And the way the metal embeds itself into the surface, it can expand. It expands at a much greater rate than any of the garnet that they glue together for grinding wheels and it'll cause chips and pieces of the wheel to fly off and then they'll get off balance and here's an example of one where i let it build up and then didn't properly dress it and we can see that this grinding wheel is actually really worn on one part and hardly worn on the other so this thing is horribly off balance now and you put this in any grinder and even that little difference really makes it vibrate a lot especially when you're talking 20 and 30 thousand rpms but yes, there's orange ones, there's blue ones, there's light pink ones, white ones, uh, just really a whole world of these things. And so a lot of the primary shapes people are most familiar with would be these style, just regular old kind of uh, cylinder type grinding wheels. And they do have various different sizes. You know, here's a small one. These 10 are a nice selection because we have, uh, from True Value, we have the short cylinder, we have a longer cylinder like this. We have two different, we have a entirely spherical, which is really nice to get really nice contours and very hidden places. And then we have a half dome one like this. You have a couple different styles where you have this, where you can kind of get in on an angle and then it has a flat spot so you can smooth things off. This thing's kind of handy as well as just regular cone style. This just happens to be a little bit larger of a wheel about the same size as this, but it just has a little bit, it's been ground or it's recessed a little bit. So it allows you to do undercutting and that kind of, uh, those type of operations. 
And then we even have disc ones, and these are real handy to get in the very tight spaces, especially like on cylinder heads or something along those lines. These have always, they do wear out fast, but they are a nice shape. Then we have inverse trapezoid, which allows you to get in behind something and actually do grinding work on where you can't, what I should say is it makes it easier because if you have a straight wheel and you're like on the inside of a hole and you're trying to grind the inside edge, you have to keep the grinder and go around and that makes it difficult trying to hold the grinder at a constant angle while going around a circle. Where having an inverse trapezoid makes it easier because you can just hold the grinder straight and then go around you know you're grinding a chamfer on the inside edge. And then good blending and rounding ones like this, this beehive style. And then of course they make those types of wheels in larger versions, large cones, large balls, large uh, hemispheres, larger discs. These grinding wheels are also much coarser so these are for high removal rates but they do wear out pretty fast. And then they have even more specialized shapes such as this which is like a cone with a big flat. It's a real long one about almost three inches long or styles like this where they have a divot in the center so you can actually put it over a post and grind down posts and uh, those types of operations. Anyway, I was sorting through my grinding wheels and uh, came across all these and decided to make a quick video on them. Anyway, that was just a basic uh, overview and introduction to uh, die grinder wheels and just kind of making you aware of all the variety of styles. So when you do need to do some die grinding operations, really you need to figure out what you're grinding, whether you're on the outside or the inside of the surface, and whether just a standard cylindrical wheel will work, or whether you need something more specially shaped, and you will get much better results when you use a wheel that has a shape that's more matched to the type of work that you're doing. It's much more difficult to just take a wheel, one wheel of one shape and try to do a variety of grinding operations than it is to have a variety of grinding wheels. Anyway, that was the end of this video, and I really appreciate everybody watching and subscribing. And if you haven't subscribed, please do. Caddis Maximus out.